Okay, let's begin then. Um, so, as usual, we begin with our pre-lesson task, and it is going to be a picture. Okay, a couple of questions there. A couple of things we can see. <clears throat> first, first off, maybe right up here. This one. Where is uh, the location of this particular place? Yes, Carmen? Colette? Yes, that's the zoo. Okay, next question. Which animal is sitting on the fence? Which animal is sitting on the fence? Monkey. Wait, where is the monkey? I didn't, didn't realize there was a monkey uh, sitting on the fence yet. Okay. Right. Yeah, there you go. Monkey's on the fence. Cool. Yeah, this guy here. Okay. Next. What is the man in the green? What is the man in green doing? He is pushing a turtle on a trolley. Okay. Thank you, Kaden. Very fast. Very quick. Good job. How about what's the lady in green doing? Lady in green. Okay, yes, pushing a cart. Thanks, Hannah. A trolley or a cart, yeah, both ways. Checking on the elephant. Yeah, yeah. What is the lady in green doing? She is helping the elephant do something. Examining the elephant. Yes, Colette, Carmen, Kaden, your guys. You guys are all on. On the money. And what animals in the pool? A seal. Yes. Anyone else? Yeah. Oh, she could be feeding the elephant. A medical checkup. Yeah, okay. Definitely a seal. Or a sea lion. Yeah. Okay. Well done. Well done, guys. Thank you very much. Now, that was a very quick pre-lesson task. And do you guys realize something about the questions? Questions are all all so easy. <laughs> checking an elephant. Yeah, Carmen. You're right. Yeah, examining the elephant and checking the elephant. Um, she's some kind of a doctor, isn't it? So what do we realize about all those questions? All those questions were easy, right? They're very easy. So they are, okay, they are all a certain type of question, okay, which we're going to cover later, okay? So what did we learn in our last lesson? Can anyone uh, recall? What well, this last lesson was about. Yeah, right. Five W's, one H. <coughs> it was about open ended questions, right? Yeah, correct. Comprehension. Very good. Good that you guys still recall what it is. Well done. Okay, so good job for that. To everyone, for all your responses. Okay, so moving on to today's lesson. Okay. Today's lesson is about literal questions, okay? And those questions that we just encountered, right, in our pre-lesson task, the ones that you guys thought were very easy, those are what we call literal questions, okay? Those are literal questions. So today's um, lesson objectives, here we go. First one, you're going to be able to understand at the end of today's lesson what literal question, what a literal question is, okay? Secondly, um, you'll be able to evaluate if a question is literal or not. Okay, that's the second thing. And thirdly, you'll be able to practice and hopefully you'll be able to answer some not so easy literal questions. Okay, some easy ones and maybe some not so easy ones. Okay, so guys, just remember if I ask you next week, what's going to be lesson last week, it's going to be about literal questions. Okay, literal questions. Good. Okay, moving on. Literal questions are the simplest kind of comprehension question there is. Okay, it's literal questions, the simplest kind. Okay, so if you have literal questions in your paper, these are the ones that you have to get right. Okay, no question about it. Okay, normally the paper will start with literal questions and then move on to questions. Move on to questions that are different okay one one example is inference question and then vocab questions okay those questions normally come later yeah it is like the first question of the comprehension Kaden. correct okay right now i know you've heard the word literal or literally right so what does it mean actually so when someone says um the balloon literally exploded in my face or the song literally, literally blew my mind. Now, these two uses are quite different, isn't it? Yeah? 
which one did not actually take place? Yeah. Good. Yeah, Colette. Very good. So, um, literal means the exact meaning of something. So, which one would not have taken place? Yeah, of course. All right. Caden, Colette, Hannah. Exactly. B wouldn't literally take place because when this person heard the song, right, it didn't literally blow his mind. I mean, that, that's kind of like graphic, but what actually happened here? It actually made him. Okay, what 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 does it mean? Does anyone know? What does it mean when when someone says that song literally blew my mind? What does it mean? He was amazed by it. very good Colette, first one to answer. Except a reward for that. He was amazed by it. He was impressed. Very good, Caden. Okay, good. I think um, that's an excellent answer as well. However, A. Right in this instance, the balloon literally exploded in my face. Was something that really happened? Was something that actually happened? Okay, but the song didn't blow his mind literally, but uh, it made him it made him um, very impressed or amazed by. It. Excellent, good job. So, <clears throat> where can we find the answers? Okay, for a literal question, the answer is literally right there. So it is really, really there in the text itself. Okay, you don't have to infer. You don't have to try to guess its meaning. All you have to do is to find it. Okay, like in a map. Okay, and you spot X. Okay, the X is over there. So that's where the treasure is. So it is on the map, meaning the answer is in the text. All you need to do is find it. So, okay, let's try our, our first warm-up activity. I have this for you guys. Okay, what do you think this story is about? What do you think this story is about? Okay, we have a picture here, cover of the book. Okay, all right, you got to be a bit more specific. Okay, you can't just say it's about um, a stray dog or a dog. Okay, <laughs> the little dog who didn't have a home. Okay, and you can't just repeat the title though. Okay, okay. So, yes, it is about a dog. <clears throat> it is about a dog who did not have a home. Okay, who didn't have a home. So, if you, you just go by the title there. Okay, even if you repeat it. Yeah, in this case, even if you repeat it, you will still get it right. Okay, the dog who did not have a home. Okay, we did not have a home. We did not have an owner. Okay, that, that's an interesting answer. Um, do you know whether it has an owner? Okay, so, right, most likely it does not, but um, you have to actually use the word home there. Okay, yeah, maybe like a homeless dog. Okay, that, that is good. That is perfect. Okay, thanks a lot, Kaden. Okay, right, what about the next one here? What do you think is the answer to this question? Okay. Yeah, thanks, Kaden. Who drew the pictures on this book cover? Who drew the pictures on this book cover? Okay. So, The Crane and the Crab. Now, that's the book title. Who drew the pictures on this book cover? Okay, you have three things there, right? You got the title. You got the someone else here, and then you have someone else here. Sorry, it's a bit small, yeah? Yeah, correct. Good one, Hannah. Hannah was the first to get this one. NG Neo. NG Neo is the one who illustrated this. Okay, so her name is there. So, who drew the pictures? Now, the word drew the pictures. Okay, no worries, coming. Who drew the pictures? Okay, it means the same as illustrated. Okay, so the word illustrated here means drew the pictures. So, of course, it's NG. New. Yes, thank you, Anna. Okay, right. So, fastest first, yeah? What can you watch in this film fiesta? What do you guys think? What can you watch here? Kids. Film fiesta. You can watch kids. Sure. Okay, I think you got to go a bit deeper than that, Carmen. 
Okay. Kids movies. Okay. <laughs> All right. What kind of movies? Hannah, you're very close to it. Movies that have never been screened in Singapore. Okay. More than that, actually, part of the answer comes on the line before. So it's going to be from here right up to here. Okay. And Colette, your answer would have been perfect, except that it was missing something. Okay. You can't miss out any part of it. <laughs> okay, guys. So it's going to be, yes, both uh, animations hold on, hold on, and movies that have never been screened in Singapore before. Okay, so what can you watch at this film fiesta? Animations and films that have never been screened in Singapore before. Okay, cool. So what other, what other information can you find? You can find <coughs> the dates. You can find the time and the amount of money as well. Okay, moving on. <coughs> How much would a ticket cost a Golden Village member? Okay, so that's the next question. $20. Very good. You see, that was really, really easy, right? Yeah, because it's literally there. There you go. And it says members. So that's what literal questions are like. Okay, so the answers are actually on the screen itself, in the text itself. Okay, this visual text, more visual text. Next one, which sentence tells us the purpose of this poster? Okay, the keyword there would be the purpose, right? What would be the purpose of this poster? Let me... Mm, yes, saving water is easy. Kaden, Kaden, you're really quick with your, with your typing, yeah? Oh, good job. Yeah, so this <coughs> poster tells us, okay, the title is... Okay. The big text, the main title says start with the little things, but that actually isn't the the purpose, right? Oh, it's okay. <laughs> Guys, some of you can't type fast, but you know the answer, right? Okay, and then it tells us to make some changes, okay? And it's got to do with, with water. So this is how much water... Um, that is in seven 1.5 liter bottles. That, of course, is a reference to, to this part here. Okay. Right. So, this is a visual, so we can, we know how you guys have seen a 1.5 liter bottle. Oh, no worries. No worries coming. Yeah. Okay. So, this part is way to visualize because all of us have seen um, a 1.5 liter bottle, right? So, we know how big it is. So 10 liters is actually seven of these bottles, that's a lot. But saving water is actually what the purpose of this pamphlet is. This is like a pamphlet, okay? I suppose um, when you go to PUB, like sometimes students go for an excursion, and then you guys go there, they will hand out these pamphlets, okay? Come, it comes folded, and then you guys can read the information in there. So the purpose of this um, it could be a poster as well. So, purpose of this is to get us to save water. Okay, Water Wally. Is that what this guy's name is? Okay, I had no idea. Okay, Water Wally. Thanks, Kim. Okay, guys. Right, so wonderful job for our warm up. You guys did brilliantly. Um, let's move on. Okay, all right. So, we always have this section in our lesson. To, to know why we are learning this, okay? And one reason is because it appears in listening, okay? Visual, as you've seen just now, our warm-up was on visual questions, as well as in open-ended questions, okay? So this is not something we need to know for compo. It's only for the concrete paper, okay? So it is. Uh, it can come up in different sections, okay? And normally, this is the question that um, they start with. Okay, it's the easier type of question, <coughs> and so they want the <coughs> excuse me, they want to ease the students into the paper. Okay, so second point, since literal questions are fairly straightforward, we want to make sure that we answer them accurately and pick up the marks. Okay, because you'll be surprised that uh, sometimes students will make some mistakes in literal questions. 
Okay, so we're going to do it slowly. Let's take it step by step so we can figure out what techniques to apply. Now, this is very important. All right. Okay, guys. So we can know a lot of vocab, we can read a lot of books, and we know a lot of words, okay? But we still need the techniques and the skills, which is what um, I'll try to teach you guys, okay? All right, let's try this one. The animal caretaker at a pet store opened the cage to let Elva choose the one she wanted. He demonstrated for Elva first. Okay, you don't answer the question, okay? Guys, not yet, not yet, okay? Here's how to carry it safely. He said, reach under its belly, then place your other hand behind under the back legs as you lift it. Elva did exactly what she had been shown to do. To her delight, the guinea pig stood still and let Elva scoop it up. It nuzzled its wet nose into Elva's neck, making her giggle. Right. So the question is, who was helping <laughs> who was helping Elva at the pet store? Okay. That's the question here. Who? Okay, remember our five rules, one hunter? Who refers to some person? Okay, refers to a man or a woman or some other people. Was helping Elva at a pet store, keyword here, helping. Okay, and then it's the main character. All right, so you have some answers here. The animal uh, caretaker, all right? All right, what is the tip and what is the technique that we want to learn? Look for matching phrases in the passage and question to give yourself an idea of where the answer might be. So look for matching phrases, okay? So um, helping, right? Okay, right? So we have this part of the Passage, the animal caretaker at the pet store opened the cage to let Elva choose the one she wanted. Okay, opened the cage to allow, to let Elva. So you see he's doing something, <coughs> excuse me, he's doing something for Elva. And then we have the noun, okay. So the person is, excuse me for a sec, <coughs> an animal caretaker. Okay, so your answer, make sure that it is phrased in such a way that it directly answers the question. Okay, ATQ, remember those three letters? Answer the question. Okay, use the question stem. Now, this is a very simple thing. What is the question stem? Now, this is the question. This is the question. Where is the question stem? Who was helping? Okay, so. That is the question stem that we can use in our answer. So we can say that, oops, let me just remove that now. The animal caretaker was helping Elva at the pet store. Okay, so the question stem, all right, is still there, right? So that is the answer and everyone got the right. Okay, good job guys. So that's what we mean by a literal question, okay? So please remember the tip, okay? Sometimes it, it, it can be more difficult than this, okay? So the steps are we need to look for matching phrases, okay? To tell you where it is, where it's coming from. In this case, it comes from right at the top of the passage, so it makes it easy, okay? And then answer in a way that directly answers the question. So craft your answers. To directly answer the question, don't beat around the bush, okay? And then finally, you will get the answer right, okay? Right, cool. Let's try another one. Okay, this one here. Let's go with this. The animal caretaker at the pet store opened the cage. Okay, same passage. Question is different now. What had Elva been shown to do by the caretaker? Now, this is not so, um, not so simple. Okay, although it's still a literal question, it is not as simple as before. Okay, okay, this time I want you guys to try. Just take a take a minute and craft your answer. Okay, take a minute and craft your answer. Don't don't rush to do it. Uh, if your answers are right, then you'll get a reward at the end of it. Okay, so craft your whole answer. Use the question stem. Um, ask yourself which part it's coming from. Okay, I'll give you some time now.
let's take a look. Okay, all right. Um, yeah, spelling errors unfortunately will affect the marks given. Okay, um, let's so let's move on. Especially if it you know if it makes the answer very vague or it makes the answer uh, wrong or hard to comprehend. Okay, all right. So what had Elva been shown to do by the caretaker? Let's run through the, the steps, guys. Okay, so most of you said it's got something to do with caring how to carry the guinea pig safely. All right. So, Alva did exactly what she had been shown to do. Now, why is this highlighted? <clears throat> Reason is because we looked at, remember the first technique, first step was to look at matching. Yes, matching words, right? So, what had she had been shown to do? Okay, so, okay, right, thank you, Colette. Right, so, one possible answer is Elva did exactly what she had been shown to do, okay? Which is completely wrong, of course, right? Yeah, so this isn't the question that, this isn't the answer we're looking for and that's not the answer you guys have been giving me, yeah? So the wording in the question may not be the same as the wording in the passage, okay? This student here who wrote this answer thinks that she has to just copy whatever is in the passage since it's a literal question. But that doesn't work. Okay? You have to look for similar phrasings. Okay? Doesn't necessarily have to be the exact same wording. Okay? So that's where this student went wrong. So, he demonstrated for Elva first. Someone else might pick up this part. Okay? And then might be thinking, oh, this must be the answer. What had Elva been shown to do? He demonstrated for Elva first, okay. And why is that a, a mistake as well, okay? Why, 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 what are we doing wrong there, okay? We should ask ourselves, what is the question stem here, and uh, that we should use in our answer? What is the question stem? So it's actually the important part is actually here, right? Here's how to carry it safely. Reach under its belly, then place your other hand under the legs as you lift it. Okay, so this is actually, now most of you got it, got it right. I mean, all of you actually, in fact, got it that this is the most important part. Okay, this is where we can find our answer. Okay, and you could say something like, Alva had been shown. Okay, right, which isn't enough. Okay, of course, isn't enough. because it is just basically incomplete, okay? So, the caretaker, another example of an answer, the caretaker showed Elva. Okay, showed Elva what? You see, here again, similar to the previous one, it's not complete. Okay, now this one, we are approaching, okay, getting to, to, to where the, the, the real, Crux of the answer is, but it's still not there. Okay, the caretaker showed Elva how to carry it safely. Now, who can tell me what's wrong with this answer here? Give me a response in the chat. What do you think this this answer is not acceptable? Yeah, what is it exactly? Okay, what is that? It carry what? Right? Yeah, good. So it's just not specific. Okay. So you need to change any ambiguous pronouns. Now, I did mention this in one of my lessons uh, this week, that sometimes we use pronouns like he, she, it in our answer. But we actually need to tell the marker who these pronouns refer to. Okay, so make sure that there is no confusion. So in this case, the answer is wrong because there is a confusion about what this might be. All right, so moving on. The caretaker showed Elva how to carry the guinea pig safely. Now, this looks like a, an answer that someone gave, right? And that is good. Okay, so it's correct. Right. However, some other people may write all these. Okay, is the answer still correct? Now, what do you guys think? Look at the answer here. Do you think it's still correct? Can you guys tell me in the chat? Would you 
okay. All right, so Carmen and Colette and Kenan think they're okay. Chloe as well. Yeah, yeah, all of you are right, okay. This is correct, okay. Just that there are, there is extra information, okay. So it is correct. Now, what is, what is a problem with, with something like this? The problem is that you take too much time, okay. Take too much time, right. The answer is indeed acceptable, okay. So thank you very much, guys, for your response. The answer is indeed acceptable. Here, it's only acceptable because the extra answer is still relevant. So, thankfully, still relevant to the question, so you get the marks. However, like you know, like I said before, it would be a waste of time, okay, to write down so much. And in the PSL exam, time is of the essence. Yeah, time is very, very important. Okay, right. So. This answer, however, is not correct. So look at it. The caretaker showed Alba how to reach under the guinea pig's belly and place her hand under the back legs as she lifted it. Right? Although this is a lot of what was in the previous answer, this time is not correct because it is not answering the question directly. Okay, so remember that, guys. Directly answer the question. It should not be self-contradictory, meaning it cannot be, um, you know, it's contradictory, yeah? It is um, wrong in itself. It's saying A and then later it says B. So you can't contradict yourself. It should not include irrelevant information because sometimes it does not answer the question anymore. Okay. Do not leave out key information. Okay, so do not leave out, like say for example, the, the answer in the warm-up was movies and animations. You can't leave out any one of them. Okay. And then show that you have misunderstood the question or the information passage. This is if your answer is, is wrong. Okay, for example, you say um, he's teaching uh, he's teaching her uh, how to like lift up, how to lift the um, no, how to put her hand under the belly and stuff like that. Okay, so that's not answering the question. Okay, so please avoid making these mistakes. Okay, all right. Thank you very much. Hope that's clear. All right. Now some questions to try out. Okay, let's read the passage, everyone, and then I'm going to give you the selector this time, and then you can tell me what the correct answer, or just do it in the chat, shall we? Yeah, let's do that in the chat. Okay, just type your answer in, in the chat. The sun's vicious rays beat down on the footballers as if they were trying to burn through the shirts, the backs, as if they were trying to burn through. Mark white sweat off his brow. And onto his already soaked shirt. This heat is crazy, grouched. I bet I'm going to pass out from the heat stroke very soon. Okay, so what was Mark upset about? A, B, C, D, or E? Okay, guys, try to answer that. Okay, so um, Colette, Caden, and Carmen thinks, and Hannah thinks it's E. Okay, Chloe stands apart. Let's see. Okay, so what was Mark upset about? How hot it was. Okay, so the answer was Okay, that was the answer. Right. Okay. Um wait, so what was it? A, B, C, D, or E? It was none of the above. Okay. So he wasn't upset about these things. He was upset about how hot it actually was. Okay, so um, well done, guys. Good job. Okay, so um, all the other answers here were all distractors. Okay, and not the actual reason why he was upset. Okay, right. So the tip is you may need to look before or after the keyword or phrase. So look at the sentences before it and the sentences after it. Okay, it could be a few sentences away or even a different paragraph. Okay, so read and check thoroughly. That's a tip for you. Okay, good job. All right, let's uh, begin with our chair challenge. Okay, which is the best 
possible answer. It's the best possible answer. Let's read through the passage together. High on the boat, our musicians sang of a safe, successful voyage with many pearls found. A line of men tugged on ropes that sneaked from the ship into the sea. The job was to pull the divers from the bottom of the sea. I stood beside the thick ropes that I circled the deck. What if I get bitten, bitten by a shark? What if I don't come up for air in time? Nasir, one of the drivers, emerged from the sea with a basket gripped in his trembling hand. He climbed over the railing of the ship and leaned on, on it as his basket of shells was poured out onto the deck. All right, what was the narrator concerned about before his dive? Okay, you might need to read the passage again. Okay, all right, so read through the answers. Okay, I've got a couple of answers from you already. Okay, no worries. All right, so all of you guessed the answer correctly. Well done. Good job. Okay, well done. Okay, he was concerned about getting bitten by a shark. Okay, so it's this portion right there. Next. Okay. All right, next one. For a few moments, I thought Niang was going to pounce on me. Fuming with rage, she jabbed her index finger at me. Get out, she snarled in a cold voice. She'll never forgive you. Never, never, never. You had better watch out from now on. You'll pay for your arrogance. Next morning, Niang called out for my siblings to give them pocket money. I felt a stab of anguish because I was the only one being excluded. Big sister came in front of me to show off her money and counted the coins aloud one by one. Okay, this one Nan Hua paper, 2018. So how did Nyang make the narrator pay for her arrogance? What do you guys think? Okay, don't don't rush, don't rush. Okay. Good. What about you, Kaden? What's your answer for this? Okay, T as well. And you guys are absolutely right. Okay, well done. So, next morning, she was the only one, see this part here, being excluded. So, Niang refused to give the narrator any pocket money. Okay. Alright, the third one. To Mrs. Kim's immense surprise and relief, the duck returned several minutes later followed by her neighbor, Mr. Amir, who had an annoyed expression on his face. Mrs. Kim later found out that the duck had gone to Mr. Amir's house and cried loudly and incessantly until Mr. Amir came out of his house. The duck had somehow led him back to Mrs. Kim. Mr. Amir had intended to complain to Mrs. Kim about the noisy duck, but when he saw what happened to her, he quickly called for an ambulance. Okay, that's the answer, guys. Okay, right, all of you guessed see that he was angry as the duck had been quacking loudly and incessantly. Okay, very good, well done. Okay, so again, literal questions really should not be an issue, guys. Yeah, done. Okay, next. Ming was about to enter his school when he came across a clay model lying on the pathway. Picking it up, he saw that it was a tiny brown-eyed clay kitten which was clearly the work of skilled hands. He pocketed it, the intention of taking it to the general office, where the lost and found basket was. However, on his way, he met his friend Raj, who had an idea for the drama club. So engrossed was Ming that he had the discussion in a discussion that the clay kitten totally slipped his mind. So what led Ming to forget about the clay kitten? Okay, we've got some answers now. Colette, Chloe, Carmen as well. <clears throat> okay, Hannah. Oh, you did. Okay, right. So the answer is obviously A. Okay, because he was too engrossed, too engrossed in this discussion. So you guys did the 2017 paper, yeah? All right, cool. So well done. So since you guys did it, then um, no rewards there. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, so let's try now um, some visual comprehension questions. This one is the visual comprehension on page one. 
So based on the flyer, which of the following is false? Okay, I have a document for this. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, so this is it, guys. Um, okay, let's read the question first, yeah? Based on the flyer, which of the following is false? Owning a pet can help you ease stress. Adopters or you might need the questions side by side, isn't it? Okay, this is the first part of the flyer. Pet Adoption Drive by SBS, a gift of life. Adopt a pet today. Obviously, the answer is B, right? And where did you guys get that information from? You must have gotten it from this portion here. So good job, guys. Okay, so an SPS officer will visit the home one month after. So do adopters receive any assistance? Yes, they do. So this is absolutely uh, false, yeah? Because it says they do not receive assistance, so that's false. Okay, second question. Now, this is on page two. Okay, so I'm going to scroll down and show you guys page two. So we have a question first, yeah? A guide dog shows intelligent disobedience. Intelligent disobedience when it does something. Okay, so this is interesting. Keywords, yeah? Right? Okay, let us look at the passage now. Okay, I'm going to scroll down to page two. Yeah, this is page two. Oh, God, it's very small. Can you guys read that? Would you like me to increase the size? Can? Okay. Uh, no need. Okay. I asked two questions at the same time. Huh? Uh, just la just last last um, question. Do you guys want me to increase the size? Yes or no? Okay, then I'll increase it. Okay, let me just 